you are about to hear an interesting dialogue on the anti-Trinity movement from renowned prophecy expert, Pastor Steve Wolberg. Before we get into that, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Christopher Cernike, and I do interviews for Christ Jesus Ministries, and I've had the privilege and honor of getting to work with White Horse Media. I've interviewed Pastor Steve Wolberg, the president of White Horse Media, twice, and I've also had the honor of interviewing Vice President Pastor Tim Saxon. You can see all three of these interviews in the description. After I finished the second interview with Pastor Wolberg, he and I kept talking. We ended up speaking about the anti-Trinity movement after our discussion on casual shirts. Do Seventh-day Adventists worship three gods? What did the pioneers believe about the Trinity? Do Ellen White's writings support the Trinity? How is the Trinity related to polo shirts? Stay tuned and find out. This clip starts with Pastor Wolberg responding to my compliment of his denim shirt. When I do interviews about the Bible and about prophecy, I typically wear, you know, sometimes I wear a suit or a tie like on. Uh, but if you saw that 3ABN interview, mm -hmm. I chose to just be kept more casual because, you know, it just kind of matches more the topic of mm -hmm. getting your hands dirty. <laughs> you were in a green shirt in that interview. Yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, you look great in it. Uh, it reminds me actually of the uh, the shirt that I'm wearing now. Uh, last time I interviewed you, I was wearing my purple shirt because the interview was for current topics in science. This time I'm wearing my green shirt, kind of like the one that you had on uh, 3ABN because this one's for pilot's interview. So whenever I do pilot's interview, I'm also wearing this uh, this little SDA pin. I love it so much. Uh, do you have any like SDA merch, like SDA polo shirts or pins, by the way? No, I have my White Horse Media shirt that I wear a lot that's got our little logo on it, White Horse Media. Yeah, that's really cool. I like your ministry shirt. By the way, um, did you ever see the interview that I did with Dr. David Trim on Pilot's Interview? I don't think so. Dr. Trim, he actually told us an interesting story about a time when he wore an SDA polo shirt because I told him that I had recently got one. Uh, he said that he was wearing a polo shirt with the SDA logo on it when he went to this hotel. So then somebody came up to him and they said, oh, you're SDA. And so they invited him to their study because they were a group of uh, SDAs. Um, I say that in scare quotes because at this point, what Dr. Trim didn't know is that they were anti-Trinitarians. So they tried to convince him that the Trinity is a pagan doctrine and that he's part of a pagan church because he accepted this uh, damnable heresy of the Trinity. And, you know, it's a very, it's a dangerous uh, movement that's out yeah, there. Yeah, certainly. There's a man that I know, and I've been dialoguing with him for a month or two. We had lunch together. Oh, wow. Or from here. And he's just sold on the idea that we're in apostasy because we believe in the Trinity. And he's got all his arguments, but... There's a big hole in these arguments, big hole. And it's hard to convince people when they believe that. No, I mean, it's really nice that you're sitting down, you're listening and talking to uh, people from the other side. I mean, I really appreciate that. And I know that God definitely does too. And he's a nice guy, but he's just, he's so convic convinced that uh, the Trinity is a dangerous catholic belief yeah, I've, I've heard that one before that you know you just you can hardly hardly reason with him i mean you can he can talk you know normally but he won't be convinced I, i've given him some real good arguments i've shown him statements from the bible and the spirit of prophecy and he won't accept them because he, wow. he or at least he looks he has answers to those verses with other verses and answers to those quotes with other quotes and mm. there's no, um, there's no budging him. Wow. And the sad thing is that he's, he's out of the church. He'd, he's not part of the Seventh-day Adventist community anymore, although he still wow. strongly considers himself to be a Seventh-day Adventist, but he's not part of the organized church in any way. I believe the organized church is, is basically an apostasy. It's no longer God's church. Yeah, that's, that's and sad so, to hear. You know, that's the, one of the dangers is that it just leads people right out. So yeah. they are, they're out of the church and they don't, 
give their ties to the church anymore. They're, they're not part of the local church and they, they're on a mission. Yeah. And their mission is to convince other Adventists about this issue, which will basically bring them out of the church. So without realizing it, you know, they are really at war with the Seventh-day Adventist church. Is that why you made that video on the false tests affecting the uh, Seventh-day Adventist church? Yep. Wow. That's right. It's the, and the, it deals with the 2520, which is another doctrine, and the feasts, and then the anti-trinity. And mm -hmm. those three are very, very similar because all three movements focus on the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. They've got all their quotes. And they're different. You know, they're different movements. But there's a strong similarity with all of them that they believe that the church is in, a, in apostasy has left the truth and they're it's a they're separate movements and they're i believe they're dangerous yeah no definitely i agree with you yeah well you know in my understanding is that the pioneers were anti-trinitarian that's true and they were they were against a catholic the catholic view of the trinity which is really not what, what adventists believe today right the Catholic view of the Trinity is that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are really one being. One three being. hats. Yeah, that's right. Three heads, but one being. And uh, that the Holy Spirit is the, um, and that the Son kind of was generated from the Father and the Holy Spirit gets generated as well. And so th they're really, the Holy Spirit is not a distinct individual person. And Jesus is not an eternal ind uh, individual person. And the Adventist view of the Trinity is that there is a Father who is eternal, there is a Son who is eternal, and there is the Holy Spirit who is eternal. And they are three individual eternal beings who are united in one, united in purpose, character. They're just, they're close, just like a man and a woman become one when they're married, but they're still two, but they're one. Mm -hmm. And the word for mm -hmm. one is the same Hebrew word that the Lord is one. The Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Just like a man leaves his father and mother and they unites with his wife and becomes one. Uh, and God said, let us make man in our image. So there's an us. And so I call that, the Bible calls this the Godhead. And the Godhead is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And, and what really moved Adventism toward more of a biblical view of the Trinity was the spirit of prophecy. In the, desire, in the Desire of Ages, Ellen White made it very clear that the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. Amen. That Jesus has life unborrowed and underived and original. And, and I think mm -hmm. those quotes in Desire of Ages, they slowly work their way into the consciousness of Adventism, and Adventism shifted. Yes, it was anti-Trinitarian, which was the Catholic Trinity, and then it shifted into more of a biblical view, and Ellen White had a major role in that. And I believe the Lord led our church into a more biblical view of the Godhead. And, but they, but the anti-Trinitarians, Trinitarians, they said they believe that we simply left the pioneers, and now we've joined the Catholics because we believe in the Trinity. You know, they have a very simplistic understanding yeah. of, of of history. They don't understand what really happened in Adventist history. You know, you're right. But the anti-Trinitarians, they actually have a, a false view of Adventist history. I mean, like they tend to act as though all of the Seventh-day Adventist pioneers were like unanimously Aryan or semi-Aryan. Well, that's not true historically. I mean, Stephen Haskell, he's an example of an early SDA pioneer. He was a full Trinitarian. He said actually that we should baptize people in the name of the Trinity. And even Ellen White herself, she was brought up on uh, creedal Trinitarianism. And so Ellen White, she never renounced uh, Trinitarianism in her writings. In fact, like you said, her writings actually confirm the Trinity. I know she said that there are three living persons in the heavenly trio. You know, so it's 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 really unfortunate that 
uh, the anti-Trinitarians, they are, they're spreading sort of like it's a false narrative. I mean, however, some of them, I mean, you said they're sincere. And, you know, it's like they think that they really, or that we really have abandoned our SDA heritage. But that idea, it comes from a false narrative. And so that leads them to the false conclusion that the SDA church is Babylon or Catholic. That's right. And, and we're not. And it's interesting that, you know, their view is really more aligned with Catholicism than they think, because the Catholic view is that the, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one being, and that the Son generated, so he's not an eternal separate being, and the Holy Spirit generated, so he's not an eternal separate being. And in their, their anti-Trinitarian view, they don't believe in an eternal separate being of the Holy Spirit which is similar to the Catholics and they don't believe that uh, and, they, and they believe that Jesus had a beginning, which is also similar to the Catholics because they believe he was, you know, uh, generated. And so the anti-Trinitarians are, cl are close to the Catholics, even though they say they're not and they attack us as being Catholic Trinitarians. So there's a uh, there's confusion in this whole topic, and I just stick with the Bible. You know, the Bible the Bible is very clear mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit he can be grieved, he um, he convicts of sin, and he Jesus said he will speak only what he hears, and he will he will glorify me. So the Holy Spirit is not Jesus, even though he's called the Spirit of Christ. He's not Jesus because Jesus says the Holy Spirit will uh, testify of me. So he's not me. They're two separate beings, but the anti-Trinitarians won't accept those verses. No, exactly. The Holy Spirit is God. I mean, in fact, uh, even when uh, Peter's in Acts chapter 5, it says that he was speaking to Ananias. Peter says that Ananias lied to the Holy Spirit but then in the very next verse, Peter tells Ananias that the person he lied to was God. So the Holy Spirit is God. That's right. I know you have to head off soon, but uh, by the way, Casey, have you been recording all of this? You have? Yeah, you know, that little dialogue on the Trinity would be yeah. worth sharing. Yeah, that would be great. But, you know, you could just take, you could just edit that down and take those comments yeah, that's really cool. I mean, I, I really appreciated your insight on the matter, and so I'm sure a lot of other people would too. 10-minute video, Pastor Steve Wahlberg comments on the anti-Trinity movement, and just Definitely. make that video right there. And so, that's exactly what we did. We hope that you enjoyed the dialogue that Pastor Steve and I had on the Trinity. You can see Pastor Steve's video, A Warning About False Tests, and the Christ Jesus Ministries series on the Trinity with Timo Hoffman. May God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, and remember, the truth saves.